Deadpool tried his hardest to stop the zombie outbreak, but what if in all of his efforts, he made it worse? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues, and we break them down into digestible bites, then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is the return of the Living Deadpool, and it's technically part two to the Night of the Living Deadpool story we did a little while ago. Click now to go to that story. Our story begins with Deadpool getting a bat to his head. He falls back into the grass yelling, Hey! Hey! Who? What? Why? and the girl swings at the ground again, trying to bludgeon him in the head. He rolls out of the way and calls out, I surrender, all right? Truce, white flag, soiled shorts, just chill. She walks over and asks him, why aren't you trying to kill me? I don't know, should I? So the girl walks away and wishes Deadpool luck. You're going to leave me here all by my lonesome, Deadpool says? You were alone when I found you. But now, you know, my mind's been expanded by the idea that I don't have to be unaccompanied. So the two of them head off and into adventure. The girl's name is Liz and she asks Deadpool how much he remembers from before. He has a weird bit of amnesia. He can remember bits and pieces, but nothing solid. And when Liz finds herself being attacked by zombies, Deadpool does remember he's not a pacifist and he begins hacking and slashing the zombies up. When Liz gets overwhelmed, she begins to make a break for it and a zombie grabs her by the hand. So Deadpool cuts off that hand. Unhand her, you see what I did there? Unhand her. Then as they run, another zombie jumps on him and he cracks it with his bat and declares, HOME RUN! But things get a little bit more interesting when the rest of the Deadpools show up. Our Deadpool looks at the band of them and happily exclaims, It's me! A bunch of me! Hey guys, you might not be aware of this, but this place is crawling with a bunch of... And BOOM! One of the Deadpools cuts off our main Deadpool's hand. Uh, Liz, are these the guys you were talking about? Deadpool says, looking at his stump. You think? Okay, well then, gentlemen, meet Liz, Deadpool says, and Liz begins swinging her Thunderdome-style bat, taking out the Deadpools. Deadpool and Liz begin running from the evil Deadpools until the zombies come back, and they begin to swarm over the Deadpools and they begin to eat them, leaving our heroes to live another day. As they walk off, Deadpool asks, what the heck was that? And Liz explains, there was a zombie outbreak and all of the heroes were lost until one hero remained. He found a cure for the zombie mess and he injected himself with it, allowing the zombies to eat him in hopes that he would spread the cure. He thought this would work, but this turned the zombies into the hero. The zombies became Deadpools. This became known as the Deadpool Plague, ruining the entire world worse than any zombie plague could have. The Deadpools capture survivors and they bring them for processing, which is a nice way to say that they get them turned into a zombie and then into a Deadpool to add to the army of Deadpools. Liz's family has been kidnapped by these Deadpools, and they're on a train that Liz has been tracking, which brings us to her plan. Bomb this train and save her family, and then get them the heck out of there. But Deadpool has a better idea, because her idea might harm those survivors on the train. Jumping on board, he begins cutting the evil Deadpools up piece by piece. To begin with, he cuts one through the skull, and then he throws another one right off the train as the other one shouts, You suck! He then jumps two more evil Deadpools having a card game by slicing them up and he cuts off another one's head before throwing him off the train. Since they're so easy to kill, Deadpool begins to wonder why they're acting a little off. They're not acting like Deadpool. And Liz's idea is that maybe their IQs don't heal back like they should. They then cut through the zombie car and eventually make their way to the survivor's car where Liz is finally reunited with her family, all except for her mother. Deadpool walks into the next room to find that the woman is being converted into a zombie and she's half converted into a Deadpool. Even Deadpool has to say, what the funk is this? As Liz and her family get off the train so the Deadpool can figure out a way to stop all of this and kill each and every one of the Deadpools and zombies, she starts to wonder, what should she even call this guy? He was a Deadpool, but he was different. He was an outcast. He was the Deadpool outcast. But as the train explodes behind Liz and the survivors, Liz begins to realize the truth about him. He is the real Deadpool. As he comes walking back to her, packing all of the guns and the ammo that were on the train. Eh, the subtle approaches of the week. Deadpool, Liz, and the survivors all proceed to the Deadpool free zone, and even Deadpool begins to realize that she has a friend in Deadpool. He, in return, smiled through his mask, and he gave her a little heart sign with his fingers. But before they can get to the Deadpool free zone, they're interrupted by a bunch of other evil Deadpools on horseback. Deadpool knocks down the one on the rabbit hat, and he takes his horse. Then he begins to bring the fight to the rest of his evil brethren by cutting off some of their heads. 
But the one with crosses over his eye shoots Deadpool through the chest, knocking him off his horse. And as his ride fled, he called out for his horse, Sparkle Fairy Gundrop! He begged for him to come back, telling him, you'll never find a superhero brony like me, since, you know, Doctor Strange probably died in the zombie apocalypse. Liz ran back trying to save Deadpool, but she couldn't get back in time. And one of the evil ones used the horse to stomp Deadpool's head in. He woke up screaming in a cage as his head healed back. I had the worst nightmare. I dreamt that the Fearless Defenders was canceled right before my giant size sexy issue came out. But that's the least of his worries, Liz explains, because they're about to be hauled off to Deadpool City for processing. The sights are horrible, as Deadpool sees a barbershop quartet version of himself and an old-timey whorehouse version of himself. Liz looks at his troubled face. Are you okay? I will be, because I'm not dying here. And neither are you, Liz. Deadpool then turns to the other prisoners. You guys are probably going to die, though, so best of luck to you. One of the evil ones show up and is holding Liz's bat with a saw in it. So Deadpool creeps up on him, and he pokes him in the eyes, grabbing the bat. Stay behind me. I'm going to cut us a path through these psychos. And the carnage begins again. With a smile on his face, Deadpool begins swinging his weapon, smashing the heads of people that look just like him in. Liz crawls out and finds a sword. So Deadpool looks at his bat, and he looks at her sword. Hey, I'll trade you. He then went over to the big boss general guy, killing him and taking his guns. Blood and guts went everywhere as Deadpool just enjoyed killing every bit of himself. And Liz noticed, and it scared her just a little. While Deadpool asked why his machine gun sometimes goes baraka baraka baraka, and sometimes it goes butta butta butta. That's why he loves machine guns. As they kept killing, she began to wonder if that's the reason that he was cast out of the Deadpools to begin with. He's too unpredictable, too crazy even for them. But as they go to the bottom of the chapel, things begin to get even weirder. As they ask Deadpool, Which faction do you belong to, brother? The Kelly, the Dugan, the Simone, the Remender, the Way, the Bun? Is there a path for people who have no idea what the hell's going on? Because that's me. That's when the priests realize he isn't in the hive mind. He doesn't hear the voices. He is the exile. They insist that he remember, and he finally does. Deadpool remembers what happened. The Deadpools were all different, but they were the same. The voices in his head were all different, and they were all also trying to fight for control. The only thing that they could all agree on was that they needed to multiply, make more Deadpools. But this Deadpool knew what they were doing was wrong, and he broke free. They were trying to call him back though, so he cut the voices out of his own head. He then realizes that he's holding an Uzi, and he shoots the priests in their heads. He and Liz then left, killing the rest of the Deadpools on their way out while they allowed the priests to heal. They steal a short bus, and they begin running over Deadpools and washing them off with the anti-Deadpool defenses, you know, the windshield wipers, until they made their way out into the woods and far, far away from Deadpool City. As they leave, Deadpool begins to think of those he left behind, but it doesn't matter. They've gotten so far away that he can't even hear the voices anymore, and they are on the border of Deadpool Free America. On the other side, Liz can see her grandfather and all of the survivors look at our Deadpool hero. They escort him to their base for his one final act of heroism, a device that when he steps into it will kill all of the Deadpools, including himself. Liz tries to stop him, but Deadpool knows that this is what he was meant to do. He was meant to make the world a better place like a Deadpool do. He steps in and in a big bang, he steps back out and begins to de-heal. He says goodbye and he begins to go back to the other Deadpools to rejoin the herd. He feels it's time to go back. He spews his new virus on them, de-healing them, degenerating all of the Deadpools until almost all of them are gone. Now only Liz remains to honor his memory. As she goes out to wipe up the ones that ducked out of the virus, Deadpool killed 99% of the Deadpool plague, but there's still 1% that needs to die. And wearing his old outfit, she tells her grandfather, world is only big enough for one Deadpool. That is part two to the Night of the Living Deadpool whole series. I don't know if there's going to be a part three, but I did enjoy this one. All of the side Deadpool stories are honestly some of my favorite Deadpool stories because they don't need to rely on continuity. What did you think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Do you think it's a good Halloween fit? I'm Benny the Comic Historian, and I'll see you guys next time right here.